Bless the people of God, stand to your feet. As we receive what God is going to do in this house through his servant. She can testify and we'll tear the walls down. Oh, God, let's receive what God is going to do through his servant, the evangelist, Anita China. Yes. Give God praise for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tasha. Thank you. I accept that. But I said give God some praise. I didn't wake you up this morning. I didn't clothe you in your right mind. I didn't put food on the table. I didn't give you traveling mercies. I said give God some praise on today. He's worthy. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? He didn't take us overboard. He didn't allow us to go. We stuck on overboard. Because we've had overboard experiences. You're lying if you're going to say you didn't. You've had overboard experiences. Some of us could have been on drugs. Some of us could have been working the corner. Some of us could have been homeless. Some of us could have been dead in our graves. But God saw fit to let us see another day. Another day that was not promised. Another day to give him praise, to give him glory, to give him honor. Now open up your mouth. Put your hands together and give God praise because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Father God, we bless your name for blessing us this day. God, we thank you for your grace, your peace, and for your mercy. God, we thank you for being with us and for being in this place on today. God, we come to celebrate my brother, my friend, God, and we ask that you touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. God, touch your servant right now to give me a word for your people. Someone needs a, a question to be answered. Someone is seeking something on today. And we, God, I pray that today they receive a word that will answer that question so that they will know that it only comes from you. God, we thank you right now, and we bless your name, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Come on and tell him, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We thank you, God, and we ask all these blessings in your name, Jesus. Amen. Come on, let the church say amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. I bless your name. God is worthy to be praised. Again, I, I just want to say I'm grateful to be in the house of God. I'm grateful to be in the place that is not strange to me amongst people who are not strangers to me, but are family and are friends. And I just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful I got to hear you live in person. Yes, yes. Amen. I got CD too. I'm glad to hear you live in person. I'm just glad to be here on today. I thank God for the opportunity to just share his word, to just tell of his goodness. All I can do is tell of his goodness and what he's done for me, give you an idea of what he can do for you. Amen. Oh, bless God. Um, we had a little technical difficulty, so I'm using the laptop as opposed to it bringing printed out. But God is worthy to be praised anyhow. I'm going to ask if you would go with me to the book of Job. I bless God for my pastor and my mother being in the place on today, Pastor Orgy, guest of Total Praise Family Worship Center. Again, honor to the honoree, Elder Renzel Fields, to Mother Sarah Jane Fields, to my sister, Toby Fields. Amen. I just thank God. I ask. God for a word. I said, God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to give your people? I said, it's his 50th birthday. And automatically, we're going to go to the Jubilee, the celebration of Jubilee. We know he's 50. We know he's a half a century. We know he's five decades. We know he's on the other side of the other half. <laughs> that's my friend. That's my brother. I can do that. And I said, God, I want to work for your people. And so I started to get into the 
the Jubilee messages, but it just wasn't coming together, and I just said, okay. All right. And this is where he took me. And um, the song, the last song that you sang, that blessed me. It was, again, it just kind of confirmed, okay, I did the right thing. God, I thank you for hearing your voice. It's important to be able to hear, yeah. know, and recognize yeah. the voice of God. Um, before I do that, as long as you have Job chapter 1. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. Oh, they fail not as thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Oh, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed the hand provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me oh great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Every time I wake up in the morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, Lord, your hand has provided. Oh, great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me Hallelujah. How many know we serve a faithful God? Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for being faithful. I don't know about you, but I cheated on him over and 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 over again. But he was still faithful. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. I'm still standing here. Great is thy faithfulness. You still have breath in your body. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is the
cheated on him time and time. I'm telling on myself. Time again, by not doing what he wanted me to do, I cheated on him. By not going where he wanted me to go, I cheated on him. By being with who I wasn't supposed to be with, I cheated on him. I said, I'm talking about myself. I'm not talking about you. So don't look at me like you're feeling guilty. You cheated, you cheated. Tell God I'm sorry. He's still faithful. He's still faithful. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, God. That's Pastor's favorite song. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Job. First chapter. I want to thank my friend from, my friend, my sister from 30 years, or 30 years now, high school. Leslie, where is she? Oh, there she is. Leslie Dix, who came down with us on today, who brought us down. I was chauffeured down, y'all. God is good. And I ask God that to bless her special. Thank you, God. There was a man in the land of us uh, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man? one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou made a hedge about him that, and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Hast thou blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land? But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Thank God for the hearing and the reading of his powerful and holy word. Nobody else knows about the goodness and the faithfulness of God. Job knew all about it. Job was faithful to God, and God showed his faithfulness to him. Time and time again. I would like to use for a text, moving from good to great. And look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Move. Move. Look at another neighbor. 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 Move. Move. <laughs> In anticipation of a move, immediately we find ourselves facing new and challenging changes, adjustments, and sacrifices in the natural as well as in the spiritual areas of our lives. Physical, emotional, and psychological in our walk, in our belief, in our faith, and in our personal relationships with Christ, about the body. 
Now, this is as a result of living in the comfort zone, doing what we always do, doing the things we've always done, and doing it the same way with the same people we've always done it with, the same old, same old. The comfort zone has become a place of complacency, a stagnant, still place, as in a body of water, seen a, 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 a puddle of water that sits for days and weeks at a time that, that goes nowhere, and it begins to collect the debris that has come and gone, the dust, the, the droppings, the wings, the little teeny legs of the insects that have come and gone, that stuff, that nasty stuff. A place of complacency, stagnant and still as a body of water, a loveless marriage, a relationship with no hopes or future for commitment, a proclaimed hunger for God but no effort to seek his guidance or his will for our lives. Just lost without a direction, going nowhere. With the expectation of moving, moving being, moving in motion, in a state of movement caused by changing places involved or is caused by a change of location. Remember the game, musical chairs? The music plays. Can you play some music? Anything, just play. Oh, it's just what it sounds like, too. <laughs> you continue to move around those chairs until the music stops. And if you weren't able to get you a seat when the music stops, you are out of the game. Now what happens when there's one chair left and there's two people left? Somebody's gonna lose, somebody's gonna win. But you've got to move. And you won't be able to win or lose if you don't move. Okay, all right. We prepare the inner man, the woman, the spirit for the impending transition. Transition, the process of change, a process or period in which something undergoes a change and passes from one state to another state, a stage or form or activity to another. The following are just some familiar guidelines that we adhere to at the uh, times when we're going through transition, times of preparation such as reading our word, Praying hourly, two or three times a day. Fasting until noon, three, six o'clock, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Consecrating and sacrificing ourselves. Consecrating and sacrificing, meaning giving up something that means something to you. And something means something different to everyone. It could be red meat, no meat, only meat, only chicken, chicken and fish, fish and chicken, vice versa. No dairy, no ice cream, no sweets, no Pepsi, no water. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, see. <laughs> but see, we're living in a day and a time now we give up Facebook. We give up Twitter, Twitter, whatever it's called. <laughs> Twitter. We give up television. We give up cable. No court TV, no game shows, no daytime soap operas, no nighttime soap operas, overnight soap operas, anything with CSI or Housewives of in its title. It's still a soap opera. Some of these are just as normal, the usual, predictable, comfortable preparation tactics that we use or that we offer God when we are willing to say uh -huh. we want to be used by him as we're stepping out of the comfort zone. With humility for the move, I began to examine myself and all of my shortcomings and the feelings of unworthiness. In 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 30, read that when you get a chance. But I am not perfect. And I never will be, not down here anyway. But I have enough common sense and training to know that I need to start with me, with this body. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. To tell you the truth, that self-cleansing can be the most difficult thing to give up Mob wives, do it yourself, TV, ice cream, or Pepsi, but sacrifice hurts. Because it can go further than just those, those, uh, those pleasurable things that have to be given up. 
A great sacrifice came, and it was made by Abraham. In Genesis 22, 1 and 2, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt, tempt Abraham. And he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Woo! That's worse than having a GPS that takes you into a wall. But for God to tell you to go and not tell you where to go, that's going to be, woo! Anybody ever been here? Just say, just say, go. Offer him up, and I will tell thee thereof. The greatest sacrifice was made by God. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We're talking about the cost of moving from the comfort zone. Yes, even in our comfort zone, time still moves on. We ask and wait on an answer from God to direct us and what we should do to prepare for the move. The long-awaited change. So by saying, Lord, I'm waiting. Hello. Time is winding down. Can you hear me now? When you have a connection to God in your spirit, you will hear. I know I have. Why do you not know my voice? Why do you not know what to do? Why can you not hear me now? Do you know that we serve the one and only true and living God? I don't know about you, but I do know for myself that he is real and I love him. I love him and he shows me that he cares about my well-being and my happiness, about the path that I must tread. Oh, he loves me in a special way. And he shows me on a daily basis, hour by hour. Now, you don't always know what to do or what to say. And I don't know what you are anticipating or what you have or may be in standing in need of. I don't know how God is going to move things even on today. But I do know that we are still and we are here and gathered here at Agape today for an ec- with an expectation. And your expectation may simply be to witness the celebrating of our friend and our brother, reach that half century mark, some to witness the return of an old friend or a loved one. However, I came with a spirit of expectancy, expecting God to show up and show out. I came expecting him to save, to heal, to perform miracles. Move, Lord, in this place. Move, Lord, in this place. Move, Lord, in my brother and my sister. Lord, move in me. We're talking about moving from good to great. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. God knows, God knows this word I read over and over and over and over again. And the more I read it, the brighter it gets. The more alive it becomes to me. It simply says, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. Anybody love the Lord on today? Anybody love the Lord on today? Anybody have a vivid imagination such as I, I imagine all kind of things. I have a very, you say it, I can see it. But I, my eye and my ear just can't grasp the thought of what God has in store for me, not just today, but in the days to come. I expect a great move from a great God. How can we expect any less? Is he a great God? Is he a great God? Then he can move greatly and he can move greatly within us and in our situations that are at hand. Because I am here today, I'm expecting God to show up in a way that will change the life of at least one, even if that one is me. That may hear my voice, but God's words. See my walk, but God's guidance. Feel the love, God's presence, and know that God is real. Moving from good to great. Family, we cannot stick and sit in a stuck, trapped, stagnant, motionless place in our past or in our present time. 
which will be our past in just a fleeting moment. This comfort zone, place of con complacency, for some of us, a danger zone, because things happen when you stand still. Things catch up to you. Things catch up to you. When you stand still, when you should be moving. Imagine someone shooting at you, standing still. How stupid is that? <laughs> someone, you're standing there, someone shooting, you start ducking and dodging. The enemy comes at you, you duck and dodge, praying at the same time. The enemy's coming at you and you're standing still, you expect to be overtaken by the enemy. But I serve a great God. I serve a mighty God. I serve an awesome God who is there to protect me against those things that will come up against me. We're talking about a great God, so therefore I'm anticipating a great move. Moving into the year with peace and favor, I realize I've been saying for the last year almost, I'm running on to see what the end is going to be. There has been a, such a sense... <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> there, uh, there has been such, <laughs> such a sense of excitement. And just as excited as I am right now, I was like this as the year came in. But I had no idea why. Oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm grateful. And I thank God. I'm running to see what the end is going to be with an anticipation and expectation on the inside. And knowing that God has never abandoned me, nor has he ever been unfaithful to me. How many of us can say that about ourselves? I told you, he's a faithful God. We cheat on him over and over and over and over again. And he still remains faithful because he loves us. And can nobody love you like God can? Thank you, God. And there are some promises yet to be fulfilled. Anybody got any promises left? You just check them off as he go. I do. As he goes and he fulfills the promises, I pull back the word with oil. This one's and I check it off and I compare it to what the word that God has given to me. That's what we have to do. We have to give it back to him. God, you said that you would do this, that, and the other for me. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. It's not about you necessarily being impatient because we're human. We're going to be impatient. We are not Job. That's why we talk about his patience, because we don't have it. Well, I don't. Again, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. But God, will, he will give you what you need to sustain you while you're waiting. The thing is to be in the place to be open to accept what he's given you. And it, it, it's not about you settling, but it's about you praising God in the midst of your wait. How many can praise God in the midst of your wait? Anybody waiting on something? I dare you to praise him right now like you got it. I dare you to praise him right now like you see it in your face. I dare you to praise God like you got it in your pocket. I dare you to praise him like you're about to walk through that new door. I dare you to praise him like you're about to get in that new car. I dare you to praise him like you're about to walk into that new job. Whatever it is that you need from God and you know that he knows what you need, give God praise because he's worthy. That's plain and simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you, you praise him like it's your last chance. Praise him like you won't see the next hour because we're not promised tomorrow. People are dying today. People are dying right now. People are dying what we are living with. Do you understand what I'm saying? People living with cancer for 20, 30, and 40 years. People found out two years ago they had cancer and they dying yesterday. People that have had AIDS for 20 and 30 years and on their concoctions and living a full life, people have died of AIDS and only found out about it six months ago. We're talking about an awesome God, a faithful God, a great God. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? I tell you, I love me some Jesus. And Jesus loved me. Anybody feel the same way? That knows that you know that you know that God loves you. You know it, mother. <laughs> 
It's nothing like knowing that God loves you. To feel his love. Woo, Jesus. Maybe you've never been in a situation, family and friends all around you, but you feel alone. Family and friends are all around you and you feel forsaken. Nobody to hug you. Nobody to pat you on your back. Nobody to kiss you on your cheek. Nobody to tell you that they love you. Nobody to tell you that they care. Mind you, they are telling you. I make that clear. They're telling you. But it's a void in you on the inside that only God can fill. There's a void, an empty space, place that only God can fill. And he can only fill it with his love. And when you feel God's love, it, it, it starts on the inside and it radiates on the outside. And what happens is you walk around, you're smiling for no reason. Your pockets are empty and you're smiling. You didn't eat breakfast this morning, not because you were, you were fasting, you didn't have anything, but you're smiling. Because God, because, woo! I'm excited about God's love. Because can't nobody, I know the song says, can't nobody love do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody love me like Jesus can. My mama loves me. I know my mama loves me. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But can't nobody love me like Jesus can. Yes. Come on and put your hands together and just thank God for his love. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm. I just thank God for his love. I thank him for his peace. These are things that so many people take for granted. Love, peace, and favor. Give me that. I'm out. I got, I'm out. I'm good. Because that means I have God's love, God's peace, and God's favor. You can accomplish anything. And it will help you to move from good to great. Like I said, over the, the, the months, that's all I've been excited about is running on to see what the end is going to be and expecting something great to happen, knowing that God's never been unfaithful to me and that there's promises yet to be fulfilled. And there was this sense of urgency and press that reminded me that there is a prize that I'm reaching for. For in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Anybody going to press? <laughs> I press toward the mark. Now, let me tell somebody, your press is not going to be easy. <laughs> not if you're really pressing for the mark. It's not going to be easy. It's going to make you cry. It's going to make you pass out. You're going to lose some friends. You're going to be by yourself. You're going to lose your job. Your kids are going to get on your nerves. Your husband's going to get on your nerves. Your wife is going to make you want to slap it. Don't you do it. I said make you want to. That's in your press. Because everything that can happen will happen when you're pressing. Everything that can and will happen will happen while you're pressing. But I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Family, it is time for us to move forward. It's time for us to move to the front position or a direction, to move forward ahead or forward in space and time. It's time for us to move. Anybody ready to move? Anybody ready to move? It's time to take the next step. Some will crawl, some will leap, some will lunge. Some may even be catapulted. And that means simply to be thrusted suddenly and unexpectedly. Anybody looking for a suddenly? Anybody looking for an unexpected? Anybody looking for a suddenly? Need something to happen now? 
Need something to happen right away? Hallelujah. Suddenly, into moving and fulfilling our purpose, a step closer to our destiny, simply moving from good to great in God. Good of high quality, suitable, virtuous, skilled, kind. Job. Did that, that describe Job, right? That's how God described him. He was a good man. I didn't say it. He said it. Job was a good man, and he loved and feared God, and he avoided sin. I'm not looking at anybody. How did he do that? I'm just asking the question. But he did, and that was without the blood. He didn't have the blood yet. We have the blood, and we still running to it. Oh, but anyway, I'm going back here. That's what's wrong with the world today. No one fears anything, and nor anybody. There's no respect. There's no fear. You know, you used to be able to pop your neighbor's kid. Now say, go home and tell your mother. And if you went home and told, she's going to pop you again. I wish you would look at a neighbor's kid wrong. Don't have to touch him. Just look at him. They're going to go tell, and all 18 of them that live in that house are going to come out the house, talk about, why did you look at my two-year-old like that? Are you kidding me? Yeah, okay. He avoided evil, and here we are looking for something to get into. Been there, done that. Doing whatever we were big and bad enough to do and get away with it. So we think. Job was a man who possessed great assets. He was what we would call a baller. He had mad paper, real estate, a crib fully staffed with butlers, maids, cooks, in-house landscape, architects, cars, garages, Bentleys with Maseratis, Rolls Royces, and all exotic animals. He had nothing on Michael Jackson. He was the greatest baller from the East Coast. He was from the East Side. From the east side. <laughs> Job had seven sons that he took, that each one took one day a week to celebrate and fellowship with the family. And there were three sisters. I guess they couldn't cook. So they all went to be with the brothers. <laughs> they ate well. Them and their families, they ate well. And they were all included in the, festiv in the festivities. Sunday dinner was every day. Remember mom's Sunday dinners? How many remember mom's or grandmom's Sunday dinners? Some of us are still experiencing mom's Sunday dinners and grandmom's Sunday dinners. But see, Job knew his children. Unlike the neighbor with the two-year-old that was cutting up that you had to look at. These people don't know their kids. My baby wouldn't do that. You don't know your child. Because they do the same thing to you in the house that they're going to do in the street. And that's why somebody in the street is going to have to discipline them because you won't discipline them in the house. Anyway, he knew his children, and he knew that when they got together, they cut up. And probably made him shake his head on a daily basis. So as the patriarch of this great family, he covered them and protected them and prayed for them. As so many of us do for our families even today. This was of great importance to Job. And so he sacrificed and rose early before the rooster's call to bring sacrifices, a burnt offering that was made to present for each child. We still have parents, aunts, and, and family members, church mothers, that get up early in the morning to pray for the souls of the sheep in the house, that pray for the souls of our children, and the grandbabies, and the great-grandbabies, and the nieces and nephews. There are still those warriors that are up early and praying for our souls. He knew about their nasty dispositions, their robberies, their insecurities. They may have even possessed disobedience to God. And he covered them and their souls, and he did it frequently. I told you, he knew his kids. He did it frequently, and there were times that we 
were moving about. And we were moving about in the midst of sin, in the midst of the sinful, but because we were covered by the prayers of our mothers, our fathers, our pastors, and our grandparents, that God saw fit to allow us to still be here on t today. I I'm a witness to that. Again, we're going back to being somewhere you had no business being, doing things you had no business doing, thinking you were getting away with it, but God was still there because he is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. There was times, now there was a son that were gathering to present themselves to the Lord, and there was one extra in the crew. Remember when we were coming up, and you had a, the fields, there was four of y'all, right? It's dinner time, and it's four of y'all, but it's six of y'all sitting at the table. And we're not talking about Sarah and Marshall. Hey, where the mother two kids come from? And they would say, oh, that's so-and-so from around the corner down the street over the hill, uh, over yonder. It's probably one of them Robert's kids. It was probably two of them, <laughs> them extra people <laughs> at the dinner table. And dad would ask, does your mother know where you are? Well, that extra in the crew had a nerve to be Satan. And he, so he, he asked, God asked Satan, what are you doing here? He said, oh, I'm just, you know, checking things out, walking around the earth, see what I can see, do what I can do, see what's going on. He said, I'm just taking a walk. Now he was looking for trouble. God offered up his servant, Job. When I read that, I thought about How would we feel if God offered us up? But he does. He does. <laughs> and that's what I call the setup. <laughs> I'm being set up. Ooh, I'm being set up because things are happening all, all around me. And ooh, I can't get caught up. Ooh, I'm being set up because I'm being tested. And we're being tested. And the thing is, if I'm being tested, I had to realize if I'm being tested by God, it's because God trusts me to pass the test. You're being tested because God trusts you to pass the test. I don't know why. I'm talking about myself. You're like, what makes you think I'm going to pass this test? Because you passed the last one. You've passed the others. Because you can't get to the next test till you pass that one. And what will happen is people will avoid being in that place and that test. You're going to go through the same thing, just a different face, a different place, for the same test. God offered up his servant Job and said, there is no one else like him in all the earth. He's a good and upright man that fears and reverences God. My power and authority and avoids sin. Job was about to be a marked man, marked for greatness. Anybody here today know that regardless of your issues, past and present, you have been marked for greatness? Amen. Satan's, we, come on, give God praise if you believe it. You're marked for greatness. Satan's replied to the Lord, he doesn't fear for you, for nothing. You have his hand in your life. You've given him all he wants and treat him like royalty, being the big baller on the East Coast. But if you take your hands off, then he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said unto Satan, all that he has, you can take it. You can do with it as you please. But do not put your hands on him. I'm so glad that the Lord told the devil, do not put your hands on her. That's personal. You can get, put the sickness on her. You can put the headaches on her. You can put the nerve issues on her. You can put the stomach issues on her. You can give them the cancer. You can give them the leukemia. You can give them the depression. But do not put your hands on them. Don't touch them. Because he trusts you to handle it. 
He trusts you to pass the test. Mm. It's a song, was it, uh, it's only a test you're going through. It's going to be over real soon. Keep the faith. Don't give up. You have to remind yourself it's only a test. He was treated like royalty, but he will curse you to your face. And don't put your hands on them. But isn't that just like a parent? They take your things, your hats, your book, your iPad. Talk about your kids, other kids, taking things from your kids. But they tell you, you let them take it. As long as they don't put their hands on you, it's okay. You can get you, all those things can be replaced. There's only one you. There's only one me. Isn't that just like God? Psalms 105 to 15, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. So what they're two, so what they're five, so what they're 15, they still belong to God. When moving from good to great, can God trust you to pass the test? What is your relationship with God? Is it an acquaintance, a novice, a friend, family? Or a child of God? Great. Great meaning impressively large, bigger than others. Much or much. Extreme or more than usual. Lasting a long time. Important, significant, powerful, influential, expert. Very good. Being a good example. Pregnant. So I'm looking not in the natural. We're talking now. But pregnant, being great with child, being great with anointing, being great with purpose, moving from good to great. As I've listed the attributes of great, it still does, it still does not encompass how great God is. How great is our God? How great is our God? Is he a great God? Come on, put your hands together if you know he is a great God. We serve a great and mighty God. Now, Jesus is the way to heaven. He is our final destination. Anybody want to go to heaven? Anybody want to see Jesus face to face? Anybody want to behold the glory of the Almighty? I'm going to ask that you turn back with me to Job. Now, we heard the good that he was. In chapter 1. I want you to go to the 42nd chapter with me now. We went through the fires. We went through the trials. We went through the pressing. We went through the lies. We went through the scandal. We've been through the disappointments. We've been through the hurt. We've been through the heartache. We've been through the disease. We've been through the ups. We've been through the downs. We've been through the ins. We've been through the outs. All in the, is a process of moving from good to great. Go with me to the 42nd verse in the 12th, 40, the 42nd chapter in the 12th verse. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job yes, yes, more than his beginning. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she asses. She had, he also had seven sons, and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Keziah, the name of the third Karen Hephek. And in all the land there were no women found to be fairer than the daughters of Job. We talking Janet Jackson fine. We talking, yeah, uh -huh, see I saw a smile already. Mm -hmm, I saw you nephew. I saw you. I saw it. We talking Halle Berry fine. Then you got something that's going crazy over. What's her name? Megan Good. Megan Good. Fine. Who's another one? What did you say? Uh, what did you say? <laughs> but we, they were just that beautiful. And their father gave them an inheritance 
among their brethren. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons and his great, 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 great grandsons. So Job died and being old and full of days. He lived a good life. Yes, he did. And what this is showing, that you, he was a good man in the beginning, but it shows you everything that he went through, passing the test, he was able to reach his mark. He was able to reach the mark that God set for him. It's one thing to reach your own goal, but to reach, to be where God can use you to do what he needs you to do, a moment and a time and a place of greatness, and he reached it. So when he reached it, he was blessed more abundantly than he was in the first place. And how many of us know that when we get to that place, we get to those places in our lives when we, we begin to be blessed, the enemy starts rising up in your friends. The enemy starts rising up in your loved ones. People get mad at you because you're being blessed. Be, bless me. Bless me. Bless me, Jesus. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. We're talking about moving from good to great. You cannot move and stand still at the same time. Action must take place. You must do something for it to transpire. Jesus is the way. Heaven is the final destination. Anybody want to see Jesus face to face? Anybody in agape here want to behold the glory of the Almighty? Anybody can feel that now is the time to make a change? To make a move, to go forward. We used to watch a TV show called The Jeffersons. And there was a theme song that said, Moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. Moving on up to the east side, we finally got a piece of the pie. Y'all remember that pie? Well, the east side or the west side of heaven is all right with me. It doesn't matter. East side, west side, north side, south side, as long as I'm there. As long as I'm there. <laughs> it's all good. But I just don't want a piece of pie. I did not go through all this hell for a piece of pie. You did not go through all of what you went through just for a piece of pie. You didn't go through this hell, this abuse, this loss, this sickness, disappointment, hurt, pain, heartache, heartbreak, accusations, aggravation, persecution, trial and tribulation for a lousy piece of pie. But I'm moving on up. I'm moving up to my father's house to behold the glory of the almighty. I'm moving up to my father's house to see the lover of my soul face to face. I'm moving up to my father's house to collect the deed to my mansion prepared just for me. I'm moving up to my father's house to get my crown. I'm pressing forward. I'm moving forward. And I'm moving toward the mark, making the transition. Families, it's time to complete the change of address card. Anybody want to move from good to great? Anybody want to move from where I am? Anybody want to move from the stagnant place? Then I dare you to get up and move. I dare you to get up and do something different. You're still sitting in your seat. You're still stagnant. I dare you to get up and move. Change your places. Change your ways. Change how you look. Change what you do. Change where you go. Change what you say. Change who you love. Change who you appreciate. But never stop serving God. Never stop giving God praise. He's worthy of the praise. He's a right now God. How many know he's a right now God? He is a right now God. Hallelujah. He's a right now God. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Give God some praise for the move that's about to take place. Give God some praise for the move that's about to take place in your soul, in your home, on your job, in your family, in your finances. Anybody ready for the move? Anybody, anybody ready to bust the move? Anybody ready to take a move? Anybody ready?
I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. Glory, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it says you make one step, he'll take two. You make one step, he'll take ten. That's the kind of God I serve. All you've got to do is move. This means all you've got to do is praise him. All you've got to do is glorify him. All you've got to do is lift him. I got to move. I can't stand in the same place. I can't do what I've always done. I can't go where I've always gone. I've got to do something different. I've got to do something better. I've got to do something that will be pleasing to my God. I'm moving from good to great. You stay good if you want to, but I want to be great in God. Not in me, not in you, but in God. Anybody want to be great? Anybody want to be great? Anybody want to be great? Great in God. It's nothing like being great in God. Come on, put your hands together and bless him. Bless him, bless him. Come on. Stay right there. Stay right there. Because for some people that have never clapped their hands, for some people that have never leaped for joy, for some people that's a move, for some people that's doing something different. Come on and put your hands together and give God praise like it's your last time, like you're expecting it to be done right now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's doing it right now. He's moving right now. He's moving in your situation. He's moving in your situation. He's moving in your situation. Whatever it may be, God is moving in your situation.
Maybe you've never been in a position where you couldn't clap your hands, where you couldn't stand on your own two feet. Maybe you've never been in a position you didn't have your right mind to give God glory, but I've been there. When I wanted to praise him and I couldn't. When I wanted to give him glory and I couldn't. But that was then and this is now. So every chance I get, I want to give God praise. Simply because I can't. your people, God. Go up and down the roads, God. Touching the hearts, God. Touching the minds, God. Touching the spirits, God. To help us to do better in you, God. To help us to move from good to great. To pass the test. All we've got to do is pass the test. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for being with us. To help us through the test. God, you wouldn't put more on us than we can bear. God, and we thank you for being there for us. Be there, God. Be with them, God, as they go through the test. Be with them, God, as they go through the trial. Be with them, God, as they are sustained, God, to go through, God. We thank you right now. Come on, clap your hands and tell them thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. From moving me from the place of complacency, a place of stagnation, and from moving from good to moving to great. 
Move. Just move. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Moving from good to great. Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. How many of y'all want to move? How many of y'all want to move? Amen. Amen. Move from good to great. It ain't about staying where you're at. It's about moving from good to great. Amen. That message was a blessing to me. Amen. I thought about the whole time she was preaching, I thought about Hussein Bolt. His name Hussein Bolt. It was interesting how he lost a, a race, one race, right? And then all of a sudden he got pressed when all these people start catching up against him. Y'all know about the Olympics, but he started, started pressing up against them. And he, he got even faster. He moved from good to great because there was pressure on him. Ain't that something, amen? We need something to bring us to another level. Now's the time, amen, to move from good to great. It's time to stop being stagnant. Stop staying where you're at and move from good to great, amen? God sure is good, amen? Ooh, I don't want to let the spirit just go out. Lord, is moving. Moving from good to great, amen? We're going to go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone here that feels stuck in that stagnant place? And you're ready to move, but you just feel like you can't do it by yourself. Because you can't. But you need strength. You need guidance. You need direction. They can only come from God. I'm here today, right now, in this place, to help you move from the stagnant place to good to great. Is there anyone here? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, God. Thank you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. person next to you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. of this program where we're going to make presentations, amen. I'm going to call Elder Toby Fields. Read it with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord again. We thank God for him moving by his spirit. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Showing appreciation for the move of God in this house. Thank God for the word. It was timely. It was timely. Thank God for how he initiated and ignited his word 
so that it became a living example right in our midst, in our agreeing with the message and making movement. And with the movement came a flow. And with the flow came the presence of Almighty God that did his thing for which we are grateful. Because we were good when we came in, but we transitioned to great. How about that? How about that? Bless the Lord. At this time, we're going to acknowledge some gifts that were sent. We thank God for the prison ministry and Sister Rochelle Hewlett, who sent greetings to Pastor Fields. Thank God for Bishop, oh, excuse me, uh, Elder Archer, District Elder Archer, in Cedar Lane Bible Way Church, sending uh, greetings and a gift. Also, we thank God for Minister Lewis and Linda, who have sent uh, greetings as well as a gift. And uh, can say finally, because I don't know what's going to transpire after this, but we want to thank God for um, Senator Mark Warner. He sent a letter, United States Senator, Washington, D.C., to Pastor Renzel James Fields. said, Dear Pastor Fields, I am honored today to have the opportunity to wish you a joyous 50th birthday. On your special day, I trust that you are enjoying a celebration with your family and friends. He was prophesying. How about that? <laughs> they are fortunate to benefit from the wisdom you have gained, reflect upon your most cherished memories. Those who have lived many years are the stewards of America's history, reminding young, younger generations of how America was before their time. Congratulations on reaching this milestone. Happy birthday, Mark R. Warner, United States Senator. So we thank God. For you, you and you who have come and given up your time and your resources. And in addition to that, we want to thank Evangelist Guest for traveling down from the city of brotherly love. Hallelujah. And coming and being a blessing to the house of God. Bless you. I tell you the truth. It's, it's good to live a long life and see what God does for his people. Uh, I'm grateful for, for Sam Roberts and ministry. I, I see them. I mean, they're busy. Good Lord. They are so busy. But it's, it's good. It's good. I tell you the truth. It's nothing like sowing your life into God. We are, the older generation are benefiting from the seeds we sowed in our youth. And to see you spending your youth in God and ministering to his saints. Because God knows they're singing. <laughs> but brother, you be preaching, good Lord. It's, it's preaching set to music. So we thank God for him and the backup and the entourage that are following him because every time he deposits, you receive as well. So we thank God for you being undergirded and I'm telling you, baptized in prayer and intercession that what God has put inside of y'all is going to come forth. And it's not just going to be friends and family that's going to reap the benefit. But those who will open their ears and their heart and their mind to hear what God is saying through you, they're going to receive a benefit. So we thank God for you, oh my Jesus. We thank God for you. Yes. Mom over here some some great things, great things. Good Lord. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for you. Because you pour yourself out when you get up. You pour out. And the more you pour out, the more God going to put back into you. But I came to make a presentation because I can stay with that for a while, brother. We could be here next week this time. Woo, Jesus. Mm-mm-mm. Take, take, take a picture with them now. That's all I got to say. Good Lord. And for the sweet spirit that he's put inside of all of you. It's just beautiful to behold. So we're going to have remarks from 
the birthday pastor. Stand to your feet as we see Pastor Renzel Jamesfield. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. Let's give the Lord some praise. Ah, come on, come on, praise him. Like he know you can praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He know what your praise sound like. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 What a moment. He's brought us to. What a freedom. Amen. Hallelujah. We found in them. Hallelujah. We thank God for his blessings. We thank God for this day. We thank God for friends and families and well wishers and loved ones. Amen. Coming together to celebrate. Is that all right? There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank God for what he has done in this place today. Uh, I'm certainly grateful to God for you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Savior of my life, the love of my soul. Hallelujah. The keeper. Hallelujah. Of my soul. Amen. I thank God. Hallelujah. It might go overboard. It might throw me overboard. But because of him, I got a hiding place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kick me to the curb. Throw me. Hallelujah. I got some place to go. Hallelujah. Hey, God. Anyway, hallelujah. I thank God for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said give on to honors, dude, right? We can talk about Jesus till next Wednesday. Amen. Hallelujah. And we honor, amen, certainly my parents. I thank God for, amen, my mother and my father being here today and and their their work and their dedication to this church and this ministry agape family we thank god for you thank god for my sister toby and amen agape who got together and put this thing together amen amen and we thank god for amen uh this great preacher amen preacher guest for agreeing to come out amen and help celebrate I can't thank Sam because he told me he was coming. He wasn't even, he didn't give me a chance. He was like, on my birthday, he said, we'll be there. We're going to do something on the, the day before. We thank God they had a program last night. Amen. And they came over today to help celebrate. <laughs> Amen. I love them. I love you guys. Amen. And I thank God for you. Amen. And, and you're not a quartet. You're not a group. You're not a choir. Amen. You had the audacity to name the group ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you think the devil, amen, is going to leave you alone, amen, by naming it ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, the parts and pieces may be replaced, but ministry will never fail or fade ever. Amen. They might try to come up against Sam, but they can't mess with ministry. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So we thank God for them. Let's give God praise for Amen. Sam Robinson Ministry. Thank God for my Antioch family. Thank God for Community Church. We thank God for all the churches. Amen. Pastors and, and, and leaders. Amen. That are here today. Facebook family. Everybody that came out. Amen. To celebrate. Amen. 50 years. I can't complain. Amen. Because you only get one other choice. Amen. So I can't fuss too much about getting older. Amen. We don't like getting older. We don't like not being able to do the things we used to do anymore and try to stay young and try to be like young people. But, amen, the more that you don't know who's, who's that on, okay, I don't never heard of them. What's that? It don't sound right to me. Amen. Do you know it's, you getting older? Amen. <laughs> amen. 
And they don't take all that. That's just no. That's not right. Amen. That means you're getting older. Amen. It's, that's right for their age. They ain't right for yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told them when I came up in church, I hated ties. Couldn't wear ties. Amen. But they made me because I didn't want to choir. You had to have a tie. I said, I'm on the drums. How in the world you need a tie on the drums? Amen. <laughs> but, but they made me put on a tie. But they didn't know that I was going to grow up in a, in a society where you didn't have to wear ties to church. Amen. They, they had me according to their society, to their generation. Amen. But I was, my generation, we didn't have to wear ties today. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying. And so, amen, we might not understand how they praise. Amen. But it's not for us to understand because they're taking it further. Amen. Hallelujah. They're taking it further than we can go. So let them praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them give God some praise and let them go on. Let the church go on. Let them move forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Let them move from good to great. It was good what we did. But y'all, what did Jesus say? Greater works. Hallelujah. How did, did that, is that what he said? Hallelujah. Greater works shall you do because I go to, I'm out of here. Peace. I'm out of here. I'm going to my father. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you. We thank God for everybody, jail ministry, everybody. Amen. That, that just came along. Amen. To help celebrate. Amen. We received a great word. Did we, we enjoy, did y'all enjoy that word coming from Miss China? Amen. Hallelujah. I thought she was really, amen, celebrate my birthday and, and appreciation till I got up here. Amen. I'm telling my age from, from over there. They, they, that looked like a Redskins helmet. I don't know if y'all can see that from where. <laughs> amen. Because it kind of looked like Redskins a little bit. I know she is an Eagles fan to, to, the, to the nth degree. Amen. She almost cried when them two defenders crushed Michael Vick down there by the goal line. But anyway. <laughs> Amen. God, he, he won't run no more. He feel like, you know how them dogs feel. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that kind of like a Redskins symbol. Amen. He said, who let the dogs out? But it was okay anyway. Amen. <laughs> so when I got up here, it looked different. I said, oh, she was, oh, amen, praising the Lord. Amen. It's all good anyhow. <laughs> amen. And we thank God for you. And thank God for Brother George. He is an MC. And, uh. And, and certainly we do miss Elder Thompson and Bishop Roberts and all the great leaders that we came up under, J.C., amen, Elder Roberts, and all the great people, Bishop Pemberton, and amen, all the great people and women of God, amen, that we came up under, amen. But we still have some here today, amen. We thank God for Mother Thompson, amen, hallelujah. Thank God for, for Pastor Audrey Guest, amen, amen. Before we go and turn it back in the hands of our guest speaker, Amen. I do would like to hear from the pastors. Amen. Briefly. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus and some of the preachers. Amen. Before we go. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you.